Uh, hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Miles Dutcher here on Twitter posting this, okay? October has been great, but the party may not be over just yet. Guys, historically, October is a month that uh, has been deemed in the crypto space as Uptober because we have uh, generally, I mean, more or less seen gains during the month of October. November is historically Bitcoin's best performing month. So he did post this chart here outlining all these years and uh, the percentage of gains that we've seen for uh, Bitcoin particularly. Uh, you guys can see in bearish years, obviously, we did not see those gains. But by and large, on our way up during the bull trend, we do see gains for Bitcoin. And uh, technically right now, if we were to take the uh, beginning of the trend from October the 1st, 2023, and I'll take it from the open price down there, and I will uh, bring this all the way to the top here. We're seeing 26.98%, so almost 27%. It did go as high as uh, over 30%, though, 30 and a half. Uh, but uh, we did see now a bit of a cooling down period. For my Patreon subscribers, I did post a market update a couple of days ago, and I'm going to be finalizing my portfolio roundup uh, probably early next week. Uh, this weekend's my wife and my anniversary, so I am a little busy uh, tomorrow and Saturday. I will still be getting videos out for you guys. But the portfolio roundup for my Patreon subscribers will be occurring uh, probably early next week. So Bitcoin performing, well, obviously very, very well. Uh, we did see a bit of a dip in price. And uh, guys, it's looking as though the trend is starting to really kind of correct now. I mean, we still could uh, get out of these weeds, but 34200 is nothing to scoff at considering we did see uh, that big bullish uptick off the uh, fake BlackRock news. Not that it was fake, but nobody could really uh, figure out if it was, uh, was going to happen, it was not going to happen. Yesterday, I did a video about uh, the delisting, relisting, delisting, relisting of uh, the, the Bitcoin traded product that BlackRock uh, wants approved. If you guys didn't catch that video, I will link it up here in the top right hand corner. Uh, fact of the matter remains, though, nothing is certain yet, but Bitcoin price has not cratered since. So that is positive news too, guys. The altcoin market has also found support. This one, according to Mags here on Twitter, Total 2 has found support and is about to leave the accumulation phase and enter the uptrend soon. So he's just taking a look at this. And uh, to be honest with you, I don't know how much stock I'd put into the upward sloping trend line uh, because generally what we tend to see is uh, Total 2 or the altcoin market or more specifically just altcoins in general uh, tend to run with Bitcoin. So let's bring up Total 2 here real quickly. Total 2, finding that same appreciation that uh, we've seen generally for the Bitcoin trend. Uh, this is total two on the hourly. Let me throw it on the daily and you guys can see uh, the same kind of activity uh, for altcoins is what we've seen for Bitcoin. But, you know, zooming out here, uh, we're still fairly low on the trend. I mean, we are still down about 66% from all time high, 66.5% give or take. Um, and I still think we are going to retrace from this most recent Bitcoin pump. I don't think the euphoria is going to continue all the way through 24 and into 25. We are definitely going to see some retracements in there. XRP guys has been doing fairly well too. XRP right now training just shy of 56 cents. Let me get rid of that here and put up a new price label here. So 55.9, again, XRP at this moment in time, just following the rest of the crypto market. But you know, that will probably change soon. Check this out, guys. Fear and greed is at 72. So uh, the highest it's been for a while. And uh, over the last two weeks, I mean, it's pretty much jumped from the 30s to the 70s, which is uh, pretty amazing, if you ask me. But, uh, you know, the downside to that, it's not going to be long lived, I don't think. I think, uh, you know, the FOMO will wear off. People will be brought back down to reality. Uh, there will be a sell off and prices will slump again. Uh, but right now, guys, we're still in the green. Dogecoin actually performing fairly well, 9.66%. Uh, as one of the top flyers here in the top uh, in the top 10, at least. So uh, market still pretty, I wouldn't say hot, not as hot as it has been over the last couple of days. Nevertheless, we are still seeing some great price appreciation for a lot of these cryptos. Uh, and sentiment here also mentioning this, okay, Bitcoin scratched its way to a new 17 month high again today. Even better, crypto market caps are growing as the S&P 500 declined. So guys, what's that all about? Let me bring up the S&P 500 here. S&P 500 guys <laughs> declining. This is it on the daily. And uh, you guys can see another down day for the S&P. Meanwhile, compare that to Bitcoin. And maybe we have seen a decoupling stocks to crypto. Uh, let's bring up the S&P again. This is not looking good for the S&P. I got to say, this is not looking good at all. As you guys can see, we have failed to make a new high. 
uh, if we were to assume the stock market was going to continue to go up, we would have had to have uh, broken past this uh, July 2023 level. Of course, that has not occurred. What we are forming here is looking like a head and shoulders pattern before breaking down further. So, uh, you know, stock market collapse imminent. The NASDAQ is also not doing that well. Whoops. And uh, S no NASDAQ, right? And DAQ. The ticker symbol used to be QQQ back in the day, and uh, that was a lot easier to type quickly. Here's the NASDAQ guys on the daily. You guys can see the NASDAQ also floundering, coming back down to these levels that we saw back in May of 2022. So if we see that support broken down, I think there's going to be more panic in the market. I think uh, crypto markets, even though they are looking fairly euphoric and bullish right now, could in fact see some of that panic. Uh, so this is why I'm not counting on the Bitcoin price continuing to move up and up and up and up. Anthony Pompliano, though, has a bit of a different opinion. I think, uh, I mean, he's in the business of bolstering Bitcoin all the time. He was on CNBC the other day uh, talking about the Bitcoin bull run. Could the bull run start even before the halving? Courtesy of Flip the Chain here on Twitter. Listen to this. Bitcoin's price from that $3,000 bottom to $69,000, I mean, 23x in about three years, is that there was a supply and a demand shock. And we had printing of money, low interest rates, and we also got the halving. We look like we're headed right back to that. Right now, we do have high interest rates, and they're trying not to print money. But we have a $33.5 trillion debt. They're trying to fund two proxy wars. We have the southern border issue. We've got all sorts of uh, inflation they're still trying to uh, combat. And so what's likely to happen here is that they're going to have to return to loose monetary policy. When they do that, it is likely to coincide with the Bitcoin. But, but near... So some interesting points Anthony Pompliano makes uh, a case for Bitcoin. I mean, whether you like Bitcoin or not, it is going to be the steam engine that gets this market running. So, uh, you know, despite the Bitcoin maxi in him, I do have to listen to what these guys are saying when they're talking about Bitcoin fundamentals, because that is really what's going to move the market. So some interesting points there with regards to uh, funding to proxy wars, super, uh, super duper inflation, uh, you know, all economic factors that uh, kind of lend themselves to not so much of a healthy economy. And where do people go when they're worried? Panic, 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 flee to other alternative assets like gold and silver historically. But now, guys, more investors are looking towards alternative investments like cryptocurrency. It's a new thing. People are realizing this. Investors, the smart money. And this is why, you know, we're seeing Bitcoin price rise or maybe partially why we're seeing Bitcoin price rise. Well, uh, you know, the stock market isn't doing so well. So again, wanted to thank Flip the Chain. Binance here is thrilled to announce. Now, this is Binance US specifically. So for American Binance users that the Flare Network's airdrop for XRP holders is finally here. Boy, late to the party. Very, very late to the party, Binance US has successfully airdropped FLR, uh, and they did this yesterday to XRP holders with a balance of 10 plus XRP during the snapshot on December 11th, 2020. Boy, it seems like forever ago. But uh, for those of you guys using Binance.us, you should now have your flair in, uh, in your Binance account. Like I said, better late than never, I guess. <laughs> Maybe some of you guys have a different opinion on that. Jim Pickerel down here saying, this is an effing joke, right? <laughs> Nine epochs later, are you going to compensate people for the missed epochs and staking rewards? No wonder you're under investigation and Binance, uh, sorry, Flair responded, thank you for the exciting news. So no, Flair's responding to the original news. But uh, I feel like, you know, if you are, uh, if you were uh, custodying your, your XRP on Binance US, you probably would feel the same way here as Jim. I don't know. Do you guys use Binance.us? Put it down in the comments section. You can also tag me on Twitter. ISO 20022, let's do it here, posting this. Okay, 2023 is the inflection year for tokenization. Now, nothing has changed with regards to the roadmap. Okay, the technology is here, and the uh, the technology is going to be utilized in a meaningful capacity very, very soon. The integration of all the big banks and the financial institutions, that has been occurring, and, uh, you know, there's a timeline. November 2023 is an important date. It is an inflection year. We've been hearing it from uh, officials around the world. 2022 has been a great year for our industry with the tokenization movement on the rise. This month, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink stated that our next generation of markets and securities will be the tokenization of securities. Moreover, this sentiment is being echoed by a number of institutions such as State Street and JP Morgan. A further indication of this trend is the rapid growing demand from institutional investors for tokenized assets. So guys, the institutions, the big money, they are actually now requesting tokenized securities. Okay, they are the ones saying, oh, are we going to get this? Are we doing this now? BNY Mellon's latest survey reveals 
that 97% of institutional investors agree that tokenization will revolutionize asset management, with 70% expressing their willingness to pay extra for increased liquidity and faster asset turnover. So they realize, you know, you can get in and out a lot quicker. Uh, it's just more of an efficient solution for what they were already doing, you know, trading stocks. Think about it, guys, for a second. Before the internet... The way you had to trade stocks was you had to call up a stock broker and, and you had to tell them, okay, buy at this price for me. They would put in the order and then, I don't know, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes later, they'd call you back and said, okay, we got your we got your order in. It's, in, it's in at this price. And then to sell, you would have to do the same thing. You'd have to get them on the phone and call them up. And now, you know, with the internet, you can do it all on, online. You can do it all yourself if you want. Um, and guys, this is the same thing for tokenization, right? For a lot of these things, and I'm not just talking about stocks, it's for everything, everything that anybody invests in, there's a process. And generally speaking, uh, you know, a lot of these things can't be done, boom, like that. They can't be done in an instant, but with tokenization, things are changing. And this is why the big money wants to move to blockchain technology. They want to move to DLT solutions. This is why this is going to get so big. So there is no doubt that financial institutions or FIs have to place a high priority on tokenizing assets in 2023 in order to meet the demands of investors, uh, as they put here. So here is the tokenization adoption curve, uh, just to give you guys a bit of a visualization in uh, innovators, the early adopters, and now the early majority, guys. We are here in 2023, late majority. We're not going to see that till 24, 25, 26 and beyond. And then the laggards will probably uh, adopt in the latter half of the 20s. Uh, for years, the main FIs already experimented tokenization on private blockchains. A public blockchains were not seen as mature enough, though. Uh, even now, the majority of innovative FIs are launching tokenization projects on public blockchains, proving that the future of finance will be built on permissionless infrastructures as it meets the needs of security, accessibility, and interoperability. Time to market costs and scalability are becoming key decision factors. So uh, the tokenization curve, this was uh, from uh, Tokeny Insights, driving liquidity for private markets, uh, courtesy of ISO 20022. Let's do it here on Twitter. Uh, I really wish some of these guys would post the links, but, uh, you know, a great kind of snapshot into where uh, we see markets going, where even the institutional guys are realizing, look, this is changing and we have to be at the leading curve of this adoption. So I wanted to thank ISO 2022. Let's do it here for posting that. Uh, in the same breath, okay, we've got Ripple partners like Air Wallex. They're looking to go public as well. So could you imagine Ripple's not even public yet? And these smaller companies, Air Wallex, are saying, you know, it's an option for us. Air Wallex is said to have started with overpriced coffee cups, but its rapid success is really the result of its plugged in and very driven CEO from the upcoming Young Rich List issue out on October the 27th. So Jack Zhang kind of gives a bit of a story here. Jack Zhang uh, is the CEO of Air Wallex. So a bit of an interview with him here. Uh, and uh, I will link this in the description if you guys want to read further. It's just kind of outlining his day here. But, you know, basically, uh, all things are looking fairly positive for a lot of these companies, especially these fintechs that uh, have decided these payment companies, smaller payment companies that did decide to uh, integrate with RippleNet earlier on and that were not uh, relegated to have to do business in the US. So, you know, a lot of these companies have already kind of gotten their feet off the ground and are now looking to expand. They're getting bigger and bigger already. And, you know, in this case, already looking to go public. So, you know, if that doesn't say something, I don't know what does. These uh, companies that are already Ripple enabled, already integrated into Ripple are looking to go public even before, I mean, technically even before Ripple uh, goes public. And I guess we'll see, uh, you know, who launches the IPO first. I mean, it could still be Ripple. I still think, I'm of the opinion that Ripple is going to uh, launch the IPO at the height of the market. I don't see any other way. Um, and, you know, it's the same reason why we think real world utility could really occur in 24 and 25. Banking on the liquidity factor, all that crypto flowing through exchanges, uh, you know, banking on that to really kind of be able to catapult real world utility. And, you know, this is ultimately where we're going to see those high, high prices, not just for XRP, but for other cryptocurrencies as well. So just thought I'd mention this too. Mac Attack XRP also bringing this to our attention. US based exchange Uphold introduces 20,000 XRP trading rewards. So we recently just got the news that uh, Uphold and Ripple are now in a partnership. So now I guess Uphold is taking this opportunity to really kind of promote their exchange. They've just introduced a more enticing package for XRP lovers. In a recent announcement, Uphold disclosed its plan to award a fortunate trader 20,000 XRP tokens 
as part of its ongoing October XRP sweepstakes. So for those of you guys who are interested in uh, really cost averaging down your XRP positions, you can enter this contest and uh, I mean a free 20,000 XRP would bring your cost average down quite a bit. Let's think of this for a second, guys. If you bought XRP, let's say during the FOMO after the uh, the SEC lawsuit verdict, and uh, let's say, unfortunately, you bought XRP at 80 cents because you thought it was going to keep going up, and uh, let's say you put $1,000 in. Divided by 80 cents, you would only have 1,250 XRP, okay, for $1,000 USD. Well, let's say you added $20,000 to that stack. So let's say... You added 20,000, you would have 21,250 XRP and add a thousand dollars, okay? Because you didn't pay if you want it through uphold. Divided by 21,250, that means your cost average would go down to about four and a half cents. So, all things considered, guys, keep this in mind. Uphold officially communicated the increased prize offer through its verified account on their X platform. Uh, what's better than 10,000 XRP? How about 20,000 XRP? Remarked the XRP exchange in a post on X. So uh, giving you guys the opportunity, every $20 you trade earns one entry into the prize draw. Uh, the more you trade, the better chances you have. So all you have to do, I guess, is sign up for an Uphold account and start trading on the Uphold platform. And there you go, guys. You are entered into a draw for a free 20,000 XRP. So I wanted to thank Mac Attack for bringing that to our attention. And what is Uphold's obsession, really, with a $1,000 XRP? Well, you know, these tweets are making more and more sense now. Uh, these tweets were from 2021. So during the bull run uh, of 2021, when we saw prices really kind of surge, Uphold, October 20th, 2021. What are you doing if XRP reaches $1,000? Okay, and then a couple of months later, December 9th, 2021, we appreciate the love. If XRP hits $1,000, what are you buying? And then over here, November 22nd, 2021, what's the first thing you do if XRP reached $1,000? And then, guys, July 2022, what would you do if XRP reached $1,000? What is their obsession with an XRP worth $1,000 specifically? Good Morning Crypto here originally posted this. Reminder, Uphold posted about a $1,000 XRP four times, and I think they've actually posted even more times. Here we go, Uphold responding. All eyes are on this. Let's effing go, says John here. Uphold responding with a strong arm. So, you know, th these kinds of things, I got to say, these kinds of things, I bet you any money that Uphold and Ripple were, uh, you know, discussing their plan for a partnership way before... Uh, we got the verdict from the SEC. So way before. I mean, these things don't happen overnight. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, these guys probably do realize how big this can get, uh, you know, especially with the American market. So you take the American market, now you combine that with global markets around the world, XRP demand goes through the roof, and then what do you get, guys? Well, the price keeps going up. You got to consider, too, how many of us hold XRP and are not willing to part with XRP until it reaches a certain price. So that is some of us. I know I'm keeping a portion of my XRP for those exorbitant prices. So it really does beg the question, how much of this is actually uphold projecting? XRP will likely go to $1,000, or at least that is their best prediction of where it could go once we do get that real world demand, once we do get the real utility. Now, the other day I talked a little bit about a Mr. Pool prediction, predicting and coinciding with David Schwartz's tweet from a few months ago, the green, the blue, the colors. If you guys didn't see that video, I'll link it up here in the top right-hand corner. Well, Fojack here also posted this, Mr. Pool's new like. He just liked David Schwartz's tweet with the frog on the lily pad. Now, I'm looking forward to the Ripple and Uphold partnership. This coming from Digital Perspectives here on Twitter, facilitating Ripple growth and XRP use case utility. If done right, it will jump off the same way a frog does a lily pad. Looks like they found that nexus for serving US banks and institutions. If you guys didn't catch that video I did uh, yesterday, please do watch it uh, because this builds on that. David Schwartz also posted this, okay, October 24th, the frog, the lily pad, we've got the uphold announcement, the green leaping off the blue, green representing uphold, blue representing ripple, and I see where Digital Perspectives is going with this, the same way a frog jumps off a lily pad. Mr. Pool liked David Schwartz's tweet, and we have this obsession from uphold of a $1,000 XRP. You couple this, guys, with the timeline and, uh, you know, the fact that we're seeing a implementation, the tokenization adoption curve 2023. The early majority is already in here, guys. Now we're seeing 2024. We're really close to 2024 right now. 2024, 25. 
as the market keeps going up, we're going to see the late majority come in. And if you guys remember in uh, the video I did yesterday, we also talked about the IRS briefly and how taxes or tax regulation is going to come into effect by 2026. And then you think to yourself, well, that's kind of after the bull run, but they said specifically to capitalize on the 2025 crypto gains that people make. So they're not saying it's because of a bull run. They're just saying, no, we want to have them sorted out by 2026 to basically cash in on people's 2025 gains. So guys, if this is not clear enough, I don't know what else to tell you. A $1,000 XRP, right now we're still trading at around 56 cents. So who's gonna sign up for this promotion? 20,000 extra XRP wouldn't be bad. That's just my opinion, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.